Christians in the community. This is where we're at. We're in the trenches, in the community. This is where we're at. We're in the trenches, in the community. This is where we're at. Peace and blessings, everyone. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I shall rejoice and be glad in it. Thanking God, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for me being alive and well on this day. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I shall rejoice and be glad in it. I thank and praise God for another day to be alive, another day to come before you. Um, and I'm just going to be very briefly today. Um, the campaign has begun. God is great. I just want to read a little bit from Psalms 35 before I begin. It's a prayer for safety, and it reads, Plead my cause, O Lord, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. Take hold of my shield and buckler and stand up for my help. Draw out also the spear and stop the way against them that persecute me. Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. Let them be confounded and put to shame that seek after my soul. Let them be turned back and brought to confusion that devise my hurt. Let them be as chased before the wind and let the angel of the Lord chase them. Let their way be dark and slippery and let the angel of the Lord persecute them. For without cause have they hid for me their net in a pit, which without cause they have digged for my soul. Let destruction come upon him at unawares, and let his net that he has hid catch himself, and into that very destruction let him fall. I thank and praise God for that reading right there. Um, so, as everyone knows, you should know by now that my name is on the ballot and I'm running for city council. And I am proud to say that this will be the first time in the history of city council here in the city of Springfield, Mass., that a black man or woman has stood up and announced that my candidacy will be solely placed, placed on black empowerment, an economic development plan that will secure economics for the black community. Um, oftentimes, when you hear politicians talk, they talk about, especially here in the city of Springfield, that they are running for the city of Springfield and the whole city. And sometimes that has been the problem with black people being left out of the economics here in the city of Springfield. When Hillary Walsh, when uh, Tim Allen and other white city council members run for city council, when they're meeting with their constituents, they happen to be white. When the Latino community, when they meet, they meet with their constituents, which are the Latino brothers and sisters. Even the Asian community who doesn't run for office, the Asian community constituents are the Asian brothers and sisters of that community. The Russians. They run and do whatever they do with the primary focus and purpose of procuring funds so that the Russian economy in this city can sustain itself and help its citizens. Our community seems to be the only community that runs on the platform of inclusion of everybody and in the inclusion of everybody, oftentimes the black community is left out of the equation. And the only blacks that secure procurement of funds, whether it's from the community development block grants, 
whether it's from contracts, whether it's from the Shannon, the Shannon grants, whether it's whatever contracts or situations that black people get, they have to kiss the ring of Dominic Sarno or they have to play along to get along with the white Democratic Party in order for them to raise funds, our sweat equity, our tax dollars. We have to beg and grovel everybody into the equation when it comes to grants and money and funds and resources. And I am the only candidate that you will hear specifically talking about black economic development. So here in the city of Springfield, you have the procurement of funds that come and they have contracts. Who runs that is Tim Sheehan. When you look at the construction sites that's in the city of Springfield, you see the Fontaine brothers name up, you see Palmer, Concrete, and other white organizations, businesses who get funding, but you don't see any, hardly any or no black contractors on those sites. In fact, you don't see no black men and women. Now there is a law in place in the city of Springfield that every contractor that gets a contract must secure jobs for black people. As you go up and down the city, look and see on these construction sites how many people that look like us. If, when I'm elected to city council, I will do oversight to make sure that when they bring those contracts up to city council, because what the city council does they get them, they see who gets the contracts, and they check off on them. I won't just check off on people getting contracts unless, first and foremost, you have black contractors who are getting those multi-million dollar contracts that can hire our people. I won't just allow them to just check off and let the Fontaine brothers and everybody else receive funding without making sure that black contractors are getting those same contracts. And I will make sure that even if the black contractors are not getting those contracts, that those people who receive the contracts from the city to do construction sites follow the law and hire black men and women to do those jobs. What we have now going on is that's not happening. And so we talk about crime, we talk about drug selling, we talk about all of the stuff that goes on in the black community. That is by design, brothers and sisters. You show me a community that doesn't have an economic foundation and I will show you a community that is filled with crime and violence. Why? because of lack of economics, particularly for black men. A lot of black men have to break the law in order to take care and provide for their families. A lot of black people that are selling drugs in our city are not selling drugs because they want to get rich. They're selling drugs to provide an economics foundation because black men are being disempowered in this system. And so when you look at the condition of our community, it is the business community that is the bedrock of any community. In the Jewish community, it is the Jewish businesses that funds their recreation centers. It is the Jewish business leaders that take care of their social agenda. Why? Because they have the resources and they don't have to beg the government. And so when you are looking at the $182 million, for instance, that came into the city of Springfield for ARPA funds, President Biden said that those funds were to go particularly to the black community during the George Floyd incident. Here in the city of Springfield, brothers and sisters, most of the people that have businesses, if you look at Eastfield Mall, the Latino community, other communities have received a bulk of 
the opera funds, the American Rescue Plan Act funds, we have been left out. And most, again, black businesses, for instance, because I am not afraid to tell the truth. The White Lion Brewery, owned by a black man by the name of Ray Barry, he received $250,000. Why? Because he endorsed Sarno's campaign. Again, if you endorse Sarno, if you are in favor with Sarno, if you are kissing his ring finger, he gives you what you ask for. This is why you see a bulk of black people who are running for office going down to the White Lion Brewery because Ray Berry, a great guy, I have nothing against him particularly, he has the end with Dominic Sarno. And so by electing me for city council, you will know what will be going on in the city. And I have a vision for us to make sure that every dollar that comes into the city of Springfield, that black businesses get that bulk of the money. And not just black businesses, but black businesses that are doing their job in a way that is productive to black people's lives here in the city of Springfield. We are left out of everything, brothers and sisters. Crime doesn't take place because people want to commit crimes. Crimes take place in the black community particularly because you don't have an economic foundation. And so you have restaurants and businesses that Dominic Sarno just passed out money to. None of them will call Stone Soul Restaurant. I mean, uh, Try Me Too Restaurant. None of them will call Burgers, Bird's Burgers Restaurant. You have uh, Nana's Soul Food Restaurant on Maple Street. You got Eli's Soul Food Restaurant on Sumner Ave that has the potential for outside dining. Nana Soul Food, Nanny's, Nanny's, whatever, I forgot I'm pronouncing them, right on Maple Street. It has the ability to do outside dining. Why didn't they get any of the funds? Oftentimes, the process to get the funds are quite difficult. To fill out the paperwork, to do the things necessary. This is why if I'm elected to city council, I will make sure that those people in our community, like the Urban League, that was designed in the 1920s to help black people get through doing paperwork and contracting. This is what they got established for, yet our community are lacking in those funds. Also, Lauren Sabado, she does in the community where you see the, the development of the community, roads being paved, um, all of that stuff. In our communities where we live, we have poor roads, poor streets, um, and all of those things lead to apathy in the spirit, right? So if you're walking out of your house and you see trash, you see litter, potholes in the streets, it's a process, it's a, it's a science called eye chronography. What your eyes see penetrates into your system, your soul, your spirit, and you're depressed. We pay taxes. Our roads need to be paved, our sidewalks, and we need to do a better job also of making sure our community is clean. You know, that's something that we can do. However, the city council is there as a bully pulpit to make sure that the least in our city receive the goods and services that they get. Let's talk about the Community Development Block Grant money. Let's talk about the Shannon Grants. Let's talk about all of these fundings that come into the city for social activities. So right now they have a thing called the Shannon Grants, where the police are passing out money to agencies that are supposed to be doing the work. For instance, you have the Boys and Girls Club Center on Acorn Street. 
You have the Dunbar on Rutledge and State Street. I mean, um, Oak Street. And you have MLK on Rutland and State Street. The condition of our recreation centers is deplorable. But the funding is going to the Salvation Army. The funding is going to different institutions outside of our community, allegedly doing the work in our community. So as a person who has spent some time in the Salvation Army, I can tell you they do nothing to help black people in the city of Springfield. The only thing the Salvation Army do is get clothes, you pack those clothes in, you send them to communities where they get paid, and the labor is free labor. And the money that they give the black institutions here, like the Boys and Girls Club, like MLK, like the Dunbar, is pennies. Can't do nothing. With the American Rescue Plan Act funds, Imagine a million dollars to MLK. Imagine a million dollars going to the Boys and Girls Club on Acorn Street. Imagine a million dollars going to the Dunbar. Not just for basketballs, but for technology. For laptops. For desktops. Computer training. Literacy training. Our institutions that deal with our young people is in a deplorable mess. And we don't have anyone that I know of that has been talking about what they're going to do to try to bring up the self-esteem, bring up the value, help black people get through some of the things that are impacting our community. Black empowerment, economically, is the number one foundation of our community. And where you do not see black empowerment, where you do not see black development, black businesses, black men and women working, you're going to have crime, you're going to have violence, you're going to have these things, you know. And I know my man Andrew Keaton, L. Keaton, he used to always tell me, you know, we need brothers like Stokes. We need brothers like Stokes that's going to talk about these issues. We need to support brothers like Stokes. And I always used to hear him, but I never like paid it any attention. But now it's, it's a fact. And so not only do you, you just don't need me to be talking about these issues where we can't get nothing done. You need me on the city council. You need me talking to these people. And finally, and finally, we have to do a better job as black people in our community. Because there are resources coming into our community. There are black people in the city of Springfield who are receiving hundreds of thousands of dollars in ARPA funds, grant money, and yet they're not out here in our community. If elected to city council, I will make sure any institutions that are receiving funds to do the work around gun violence, opioid addiction, um, tribal warfare, that if they're not doing, though, we'll audit them. And if you're not doing the job that you're supposed to be doing, you won't be getting this money. We have to, we have to take a deep look inside, right? Because we should not expect any community, the Asians, the Latinos, the Russians, anybody to do anything for us when we won't do it for ourselves. Nobody respects a beggar. Nobody respects anyone who's begging and asking others to do for us what we could do for ourselves. This is why I'm running for city council. This is why I need people to get registered, to vote, vote September the 12th, vote for Charles Stokes for city council. Like the biggest fear, brothers and sisters, that the system 
has always had is that a black person like me who cannot be controlled that black people would listen to and begin to say, wait a minute, what he is saying makes absolute sense. And then we start moving in a direction that's diametrically opposed to what some black people are doing now. The greatest fear, Brother Rick, is men like us standing up saying we're not going to take it anymore. And we have to look at the self-esteem and the self-image of black men and why we're behaving the way we're behaving. There is a root cause to that. The biggest fear to white supremacy and systematic racism militaristically is the black man. This is why they do all they can to disempower us, to make us leave out of our family's lives, to make us think that we don't have self-worth. And we have been, and we have bought into that idea. So we have abandoned in our post and our community as providers maintainers, protectors, lovers, community developers, we have. And now it's time for us to step up. And we as black men and women need to work together. We are not each other's enemies. We have to know too that our black women go through just as much as we do. We do. They're the first to be uh, sexually harassed on their jobs. They're the first to be discriminated against. And so this is not a, an oppression war as who's being oppressed the most by this system. We all are. Whether you're black, gay, black, straight, black, lesbian, black, queer, black, transgender, black, heterosexual, it doesn't matter. The focus is because we are black. We have to come together. We have to love each other. And we have to speak out and speak up against what is going on. And we need someone who cannot be controlled, who cannot be told what to do, and is working exclusively for the betterment of the black community. And I think and I believe that I am the only black candidate that will be talking about black empowerment and I have a platform and I'm not going to roll it all out now because I've noticed over the years oftentimes I have ideas and I have things that I have studied on and I bring it out people steal it use it for their own benefit and their own gains right so this Wednesday um, I have a sit down with the editorial board of the Republican newspaper. Now I understand what they're going to try to do. They're going to try to see who this minister Charles Stokes really is. Does he have any ideas? Or, uh, or is he as some blacks in this community whisper behind my back, some say it out loud, that I'm a fraud, that I'm a phony, that I'm a fake, that I'm a loud mouth. They want to try to turn me into a cartoon character. I know what the Republicans' role is, but I'm going anyway because I have to go to make sure that they know that I'm not what people say I am. But I love black people, and sometimes I've recognized in this city of Springfield that you have to love black people more than they hate you. And this is why I'm running for city council. I'm running for city council to make an impact and a difference in the lives of black people, in the lives of the young men on Sycamore, 
the lives of the young men that's on the Ave and Burr Block and, and all of those places, to put the guns down, to stop killing each other. In our city, there are more than 100 unsolved homicides of black and Latino people, right? Half of the people are black people. Yet, you don't hear any city councilor, the mayor, or no one talking about what is the economic solution to stopping gun violence. And so if I'm elected to city council, what I would do is to, to try to talk to the rest of the city councilors to see if we can remove the police officers that are doing those flagging jobs on construction sites, monitoring traffic, and give those jobs to young black men and women. You don't have to do a quarry check for their, those jobs. It doesn't entail working around children, the elderly. Police officers bid on those jobs. They get $60 an hour. I suggest that we give those jobs to young black men and women and you can pay them $30 an hour to save the tax dollars, the, six, the $30 an hour. These are things that can be done. Where did I get this from? In Boston, Massachusetts, the city council there is working on the same agenda. The police are making a killing doing jobs that our people can do. These are the ideas that we can do collectively as a city council, but they don't have the initiative, the constitutional capability to do stuff that's going to be productive for us because they don't want to seem like they hate people. No other groups of people think like us. The sickness of it all for black people to think that you are righteous because you're including everybody. Imagine you working a job, you get your paycheck, and then you feed somebody else's children, and then you applaud yourself for feeding someone else's children while your children starve. We're the only people who applaud our ignorance for believing that by helping somebody else and not helping yourself first, that you are a righteous individual, that God favors you. We all know what our parents always told us. God bless the child that has its own. We're the only children that don't have our own, our own identity, our own politics, nothing. We have black people that hate black people. And so we can't save everybody. This is not a utopia. If you have a severe case of cancer and you go to the doctor, they will tell you there's a decision that has to be made. We may have to take a limb to save the cancer. Sometimes you gotta make those decisions for the betterment of the whole body. For the betterment of the whole body. Some black people just gonna have to be cut off. Some of us are gonna have to go to prison. Some of us are going to die using because we don't want to change. And God will not change the condition of a people until we first change the condition of ourselves. So share this video. Please share this video. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. Talk to you soon. Peace.